Welcome to Things You Should Know, the Civil War Edition. Today we're moving from Charleston Harbor, South Carolina and back to Jefferson County, Texas for the Second Battle of Sabine Pass on September 8, 1863. Commanding Union forces were Union Navy Lieutenant Frederick Crocker, commander of the USS Clifton, a steam-powered sidewheeler who was acting as captain of an advanced squadron of three additional Union gunboats. These consisted of the Granite City, the Sackham, and the Arizona all hailing from the West Gulf Blockading Squadron. Assisting Lieutenant Crocker was Union Major General William Franklin on board the USS Suffolk, along with six additional vessels in his squadron. Behind them lay a 22-ship invasion fleet of 5,000 Union Army troops. Opposing him was Major Richard W. Dawling, leading Company F, known as Jeff Davis's Guards, also part of the 1st Heavy Artillery Regiment. With him was 50 infantry along with 6 artillery pieces out of Fort Griffin, along with Confederate Naval Captain Leonidas R. Smith who oversaw the naval forces in the area. By the end of the day, the Confederates would have a smashing victory, one that would stop indefinitely all Union plans of the invasion of Texas by land. As part of an effort to dissuade France from helping the Confederacy, Union command sent a combined Army-Navy force to Texas as a warning for the French to stop trading cotton for arms. The original path of the force was redirected due to the Red River's inaccessibility to the Union naval ships. The new landing would now be at the Texas coast near Sabine Pass. Union General Franklin's purpose with the gunboats and infantry was to take out the Confederate forts overseeing the pass and to capture Sabine City itself. The main fort of interest was Fort Griffin, commanded by Richard W. Dick Dowling, along with his six artillery pieces of the Jeff Davis Guards. The Confederate soldiers were all expert marksmen and had been in the fort for some time, allowing them to set up targeting poles in the mud to allow them to track Union ships and fire with more accuracy. Union Lieutenant Frederick Crocker led his four-ship squadron into the pass, trying to set up a position to cover General Franklin's 5,000 men as they sailed into position themselves. The Confederate defenders waited and allowed the entire force to get in range as the USS Sackham moved ahead of the group to the opposite end of the channel. Once the Union ships were all within range of the Confederates, they unloaded their cannons. The first volley of shots hit the Sackham, punching through the boiler and immediately knocked it out. Meanwhile, the Union flagship the USS Clifton was almost immediately incapacitated and forced to surrender as well including their commander, Lieutenant Crocker. The battle was already over as the rest of the Union convoy retreated immediately. Losses were extreme in comparison for the Union against the Confederates. In the end, Confederates suffered no damage and no casualties. Meanwhile, the Union lost 376 men, including 24 killed or badly wounded, and at least 37 missing, with more than 315 naval personnel captured. In addition, the Confederates captured the USS Clifton and the USS Sackham, along with at least 13 heavy cannon, including two of the newly created Parrot rifles, which were incredibly powerful for the time. Crocker's men received a personal thanks from the Confederate Congress via a special resolution thanking the Jeff Davis Guard. The Houston locals raised enough funding to award medals to the guards in the form of Davis Guard medals, which were made from silver Mexican pesos by smoothing off the coins and hand stamping the battle name and date with the initials DG. Join us again next time for Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.